While all eyes are currently on Starship Flight 6 scheduled for November 19th, one question remains, what comes up next? Yeah, Flight 6 is the final test flight of Starship's version 1 prototype, and then in Flight 7, we will witness the astonishing introduction of its version 2. So, why do I call it the astonishing introduction? Well, since it's the first generation, Starship version 1 will be used primarily for testing purposes. Therefore, version 2 will be where SpaceX demonstrates its innovation potential in the clearest way. And according to SpaceX, one of the most notable upgrades on Starship's second generation will be in the forward flaps. Find out everything in today's episode. Contributing to Flight 5's success, can't help but mention Ship 30 belonging to Starship's first version. Ship 30 is also the first version to witness the change in the whole heat shield system, with the entire heat shield being replaced, and upgraded materials would be added beneath it. Thanks to improvements, the S-30 performed admirably throughout most of its journey, opening up exciting possibilities for full catching attempts in the future. But as is often the case with cutting-edge technology, there's still room for improvement. Toward the end of the flight, the flap joint experienced burns, though less severe than in previous tests. This shows that although the design upgrade has proven beneficial, further improvements are still needed. Since the version 1 prototypes are near completion, implementing drastic changes to the current design would be difficult at this stage. This is where the focus shifts to version 2, which will incorporate more significant upgrades. Most notable is the upgrades on forward flaps. Frankly, SpaceX presented the rendered visuals of the brand new forward flaps for the Block 2 ship in April 2024. As you can see, new forward flaps are smaller and more pointy, also higher on the fuselage to avoid melting between the flaps. And now, with the introduction of Ship 33, the first version 2 Starship's second stage prototype and is currently planned to launch in Starship Flight 7, we have the chance to see them in reality. At first glance, we don't see much difference between render and reality. These flaps have a much more swept shape compared to the current design and will no longer have the bottom edge parallel to the ground when deployed. However, they seem to have a relatively similar size. Musk elaborated, stating that a newer version of Starship would shift the forward flaps leeward, improving reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload capacity to orbit. In fact, the edges of the flap have been adjusted to improve aerodynamic impact. Its position has been optimized by moving it closer to the top of the ship, enhancing directional control during flight. Unlike the older design, where the flaps were symmetrical symmetrically placed at 180 degrees. The new configuration shifts the flaps leeward to about 120 to 140 degrees. This repositioning offers better protection during atmospheric re-entry, reducing the potential for damage like what was observed in Flight 4. Elon Musk had been teasing these changes as far back as 2021 when he mentioned that, by the way, there's a slight error with forward flap design. Moving section is needed for control, but passive section is counterproductive as it pushes nose backwards. New design rotates forward, flaps more to leeward and further forward to improve moment arm, maybe roughly 120 degree apart. Beyond a space shuttle style heat shield of blankets and ceramic tiles, the Starship upper stage is meant to achieve that reusability by descending through the atmosphere and landing unlike any other spacecraft, plane, or rocket ever flown. Instead of flying, gliding, or knifing through the atmosphere nose or tail first, Starship free falls perpendicular to the ground for the last few dozen kilometers before aggressively flipping into a vertical orientation at the last second and landing propulsively on its tail. Now, according to Elon Musk, two of the four flaps that largely make that exotic maneuver possible are set for a small but significant redesign. I'm so glad we finally fixed the forward flap design. The old one was killing me. It was too large and heavy, positioned at 180 degrees, which caused issues during the high heating hypersonic phase of flight. The new design solves those problems. These new flaps are almost half of the thickness compared to the current generation forward flaps. This should greatly reduce their mass, further optimizing the Starship design. The small size helps to reduce the static aerodynamic demands that affect navigation and the critical flip maneuver during descent. This design minimizes the risk of damage during flight and simplifies manufacturing, 
which will increase operational flexibility. One interesting tidbit is the new flap design wasn't applied to the later version 1 models. After the issues encountered with the flaps in Flight 4, this design revision resurfaced. In addition to the flaps, Starship's other parts are also improved. The first version of version 2 reveals a slightly larger ship body, with the payload door positioned higher, indicating an increase in fuel tank capacity. This expansion is beneficial to Starship's operational range, allowing it to carry more more fuel to return to Starbase, support orbital refueling operations, and eventually venture beyond Earth orbit. The heat shield will also be featured. As SpaceX wrote on its website, future ships, starting with the vehicle planned for the seventh flight test, will fly with significant upgrades including the latest generation tiles and secondary thermal protection layers as we continue to iterate towards a fully reusable heat shield. In preparation for Flight 6, Ship 31 is significantly reduced heat shield stripping back several columns of tiles on the sides of the vehicle. An estimated 1,370 tiles were removed from S-31, reducing the total number of star bricks from 18,492 to 17,122. So why did SpaceX have entire sections of heat shield tiles removed on either side of the ship? Honestly, it will serve research purposes. That location would make direct contact with the robotic catch arms in Via Flight 6. SpaceX aims to study installing catch-enabling hardware in that area on future vehicles. Theoretically, these sections don't face much exposure to plasma during re-entry, but face the risk of being damaged by the chopstick during the catch. For this reason, it's likely that SpaceX will need to develop additional hardware solutions to protect the heat shield from the impact of the robotic arms. If all goes well, we could see the hardware on Ship 33 during Flight 7. Also in the sixth test flight, SpaceX plans to test changes in the thermal protection system on Starship, assessing new secondary thermal protection materials. Upgrades on TPS in Flight 6 are based on what has been done in Flight 5. Ship 30 of Flight 5 was added beneath the primary tiles as an insurance policy. These secondary tiles are made from silicone and felt, meaning they self-cool by slowly disintegrating to expel heat. They performed well in protecting Ship 30 during re-entry, which allows SpaceX to go further with the new secondary thermal protection materials on Ship 31. As SpaceX said, several thermal protection experiments and operational changes will test the limits of Starship's capabilities and generate flight data to inform plans for ship catch and reuse. With all these upgrades, Starship version 2 represents a major leap forward toward full reusability and extended mission capabilities. These upgrades are pivotal, with SpaceX highlighting their importance in the recent update. Learnings from this and subsequent flight tests will continue to make the entire Starship system more reliable as we close in on full and rapid reusability. According to the latest update, after setting a record of 41 days assembling, Ship 33 currently reached the Massey test site in late October for cryogenic testing. Following this, it returned to the production site at Mega Bay 2, where it received its engines. If all goes smoothly, S-33 will soon head back to Massey for a static fire test. Once that phase is complete, it'll be ready to pair with a booster for integration testing. If you think the upgrades on Starship stop there, think again. Elon Musk has proposed that a future iteration of SpaceX's Starship, referred to as Starship 2.0, could have a diameter of 18 meters, which is double the current 9-meter diameter of the existing Starship design. 18 meters makes it the widest rocket ever built, surpassing previous designs like the Saturn V. This significant increase in size would dramatically enhance the spacecraft's capacity and capabilities. This would mean the area of the cross-section would be four times higher. If the height was also doubled, then it would have nine times the volume. The engines would likely be upgraded for the ultra-heavy Starship 2.0. This means the next rocket might be able to launch over 1,000 tons per launch. Musk has repeatedly emphasized that sending large amounts of cargo to Mars will require thousands of flights over the next decade. Starship 2.0 could dramatically reduce that number allowing for fewer trips with greater payloads. Elon Musk estimates that the cost to colonize Mars could be over $1,000 trillion, which is far more than the current U.S. GDP. This is because Musk estimates that it would cost around $1 billion per ton of equipment to deliver to Mars, and that building a self-sustaining city would require at least a million tons of equipment. Musk has a plan to reduce these costs by developing a rocket called Starship, 
that could improve the technology and efficiency of space travel by a factor of 1,000. With such advancements, he projects that the cost could be reduced to around $1 trillion, which could be spread over 40 or more years, resulting in an annual expenditure of less than $25 billion. He hopes to eventually reduce the cost of traveling to Mars to around $100,000 per person, which would make it possible for almost anyone to afford a ticket. Musk has also said that the return trip from Mars would be free. The number of $100,000 per person is half of his previous calculation. In 2016, Musk described how Martian colonization would work. Sending 12 astronauts to Mars will cost an estimated $10 billion per person, Musk said, but if 1 million people sign up, the cost would drop to a mere $200,000 per traveler, which he compared to the price of a house. Musk said that reaching such a price through the use of traditional methods for space travel would be impossible. Using those established means, it would be closer to $10 billion per person, which is completely out of reach for many people who might otherwise be willing to uproot their lives and make such a daring trip. The ship he proposes to transport humans to the red planet is huge, 12 meters in diameter and 122 meters tall. It's supposed to carry at least 100 people, have restaurants, a cinema, you name it. To make the dream come true, Musk needs to find a way not just to make the rockets reusable, which has been a key talking point for SpaceX as it practiced landing rockets on a robotic boat throughout the year, but also to make it safe and popular. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.